Bon dia to Tom. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the to the first workshop of the Maria de Maes II uh, program we have at the DETIC. For me, it's a, it's a pleasure uh, to welcome all of you from different parts of the of the of the world. And this is uh, for me it's uh, a special moment because it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a very important project for the for the DETIC. It's not a project; it's a program. In fact, it's a portfolio of projects. Today, we will see a lot of the ongoing projects uh, within the Maria de Maestu. And uh, for me, it's, uh, only six months after starting the Maria Maestu, having this, this workshop with uh, all this presentation, it's, it's, it's really a, a challenge because it's a work in progress. I think it's a good moment for providing any kind of feedback or synergies uh, between the, among these projects or other future projects uh, within this program. And, and for sure, it's a, it's a pleasure to, to introduce this, this session. Before, uh, before the scientific director, Xavier Serra, will give a, a longer explanation of the, the whole program, uh, I would like to just say uh, one more thing. Uh, today, is, uh, this week, is a really busy week at the DETIC. Yesterday, we were uh, joining a session with the advisory board. Uh, we have an international advisory board with uh, uh, very uh, excellent colleagues from, from different uh, international universities. And we are uh, in the process of uh, continuous evaluation because this is part of our culture and this is uh, very important in order to succeed uh, not only in research but also in teaching and in, in uh, any of the activities that the DETIC is, is hosting. So uh, just I'd like to thank to Elisa as the president of the advisory board for not only being uh, here yesterday but also today and, also, and I think that she will explain some of the research uh, that she's uh, doing at, at Purdue University and Alison, which is also here as member of the advisory board, and Nuria that will arrive, I think, in a, in a couple of minutes. So uh, welcome all of you. I think that this will be a very fruitful uh, session, not only today, but also tomorrow. With all these presentations, uh, the agenda is really crowded, so uh, that's all from my side. Welcome all of you, and please, Javier. Okay, well, um, I guess you all have the, the, the program. Hopefully, we'll follow uh, as it is. So I will start uh, with a, a brief uh, overview, highlighting some aspects of uh, what uh, this Maria de Maestro Tesrigi program is. So I will do it from there. So okay. Anyway. okay. Thank you. Okay, um, so uh, good morning, everyone. Um, maybe for the people that know me, uh, you might uh, be thinking, what is this guy doing with this suit uh, here? <laughs> and uh, you're right, uh, but I have to explain it. Uh, uh, three weeks ago, uh, I was in an audience with the Spanish kings uh, that uh, was uh, having for all the Maria de Maestu scientific directors and uh, Severo Ochoa. Uh, so I had to buy a suit. Uh, so as a, and as a good Catalan, uh, I cannot just leave it in the closet uh, for the rest of uh, its life. So I thought that it was a good occasion to make a little joke and, uh, and wear it today. So and I, I guess I am the only one with that. So I guess it's okay. But uh, for sure tomorrow we'll continue being in the closet, uh, maybe for the rest of uh, its life. But anyway. Uh, so, I don't want to go over the, the whole program. Uh, uh, the website is uh, quite complete and uh, I think you can get a lot of information there. But let me just highlight a few things. Uh, first, uh, this, uh, this accreditation, which is the, the Maria de Mesto accreditation that is given by the Spanish Ministry of Economy and, and Competitiveness. It's a, it's a very recent uh, uh, initiative of the ministry. Uh, of the Maria de Maestu, this was the, the, the second year, basically. And uh, there was also this other initiative of Severo Ochoa for uh, much bigger centers. And uh, of course, uh, I believe it's a, it's a really a great initiative because it allows us, as, uh, as you will see, to leverage on a number of things that as a normal department is very hard uh, to, to face and to, to really work on. Um, 
so anyway, so of course we are really happy and honored to, to be part of that and uh, we are the only uh, engineering department in Spain that uh, has uh, such a distinction. So it's also kind of a responsibility for us to uh, try to do the best uh, we can with that. Um, and I guess uh, for most of you, and I was the first one, uh, sincerely I have to apologize, I didn't know who Maria de Maestro was until uh, three years ago. Um, she uh, was an educator and a feminist, uh, very active uh, in the, before the Civil War. Um, she was born in the Basque Country and then uh, after the war, well, during the war she, she left to Argentina. And um, she's known especially for promoting uh, higher education initiatives for women. She established a, a residency for women in Madrid to sort of help uh, women uh, uh, attend university and uh, so she was uh, very active for uh, a number of education uh, initiatives, uh, especially for uh, women education. So it's great to, to, to have that name uh, in this, uh, in this uh, program. And what does this uh, accreditation recognize? Well, it uh, recognizes uh, a number of things. Um, it recognizes the, the high level of uh, competitiveness and impact of a, a research uh, center or research uh, uh, sort of um, department like ours. It, uh, it, uh, an important aspect and related with what uh, Mikhail was saying, it, uh, it requires that the centers that uh, get this accreditation are regularly assessed uh, by external independent committees. Uh, this is something that we have and it's a very important way to validate uh, the kind of things that we do. Um, also, it uh, recognizes uh, the ability of a department uh, to attract uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, researchers and uh, faculty from around the world. And I think it's clear that uh, we have been able to do that. Um, and uh, it, uh, of course, uh, aims that uh, all these centers uh, are really active at the international research arena and that uh, these centers have uh, uh, collaborations with uh, high-level centers uh, around the world. Also an important part, uh, and this is phrased in a special way, sort of because of course this is one of the biggest, uh, I would say, shortcomings or uh, difficulties of Spanish uh, research uh, uh, centers and I would say even European ones, the, the lack or the difficulty of uh, doing uh, tech transfer uh, to the society. Uh, but at least uh, this recognizes that we are working on that. It doesn't say that uh, we have accomplished that, but it, it's uh, interesting that it says that uh, these centers are working on, on this. And finally, and uh, this is the one that uh, I will be focusing more, is the idea that we have a strategic uh, program that aims at uh, getting better, at uh, really doing more competitive research. Uh, sincerely, uh, from our case, uh, I would like to see this accreditation more of a recognition of potential than a recognition of accomplishment. Uh, I think uh, our department uh, is uh, uh, I would say quite uh, a young department, uh, considering the normal universities uh, in Spain. Uh, and it has a lot of potential to really uh, doing very good in all these things. Uh, I think we still have uh, uh, quite a bit of room of in for improvement, and this is why this program, I believe, is a good tool for doing that. So I would see that uh, we, we are a department with a lot of potential to accomplishing these things. And I hope uh, with uh, this program uh, we can really advance in that. So let me just uh, uh, say a few things. Uh, first about the department. And for me there are two numbers, very simple numbers, that uh, say quite a bit about our department. Uh, our department has uh, 37 uh, permanent faculty members, this including the ICREA uh, researchers. Uh, that's very little. If you look at uh, departments of engineering departments, even in Spain, that's very little, especially if you compare it with the number of members of researchers. This uh, also includes uh, PhD students. So we, we have 415 uh, 
researchers, uh, um, uh, faculty members that are not permanent, that are in tenure track or uh, PhD students. And uh, this uh, says quite a bit because it basically says that uh, 37 people, uh, which are basically the ones that we can feel comfortable in making decisions and applying for projects and applying for initiatives, we are able to uh, support, because most of these people are supported by external funding, we are able to support uh, 415 people. And that's not common, I would say, in, especially in the Spanish uh, uh, department system. And also another, uh, I would say, uh, specificity of our department is that, okay, we are a department in uh, ICT, in Information and Communication Technologies, but if you look at the research groups that uh, are part of the department, that we have, we have grouped them in uh, four different areas, is quite diverse. Uh, we have uh, a number of groups working, would say, more on the traditional computer science type of topics and that we call computation and intelligent systems. Uh, we have groups uh, working in image, uh, audio, video type of process, uh, processing, signal processing, which it's sometimes is within ICT, but sometimes uh, these are groups that are within other type of departments like electrical engineering or things like this. We have a group very much on like telecommunications type things, so that's not, uh, I would say, the, the computer science, so that's quite distinct, and in many, in many places it would be even a completely different department. And uh, even more, we have a, quite a, a large number of uh, research and uh, faculty and groups uh, related with uh, more biomedical engineering and uh, computational biology. So that's, uh, that's also quite distinct. So with a, with a department like that, um, that basically we didn't uh, design from start, uh, one of the characteristics of the Spanish university system is that you don't have much control over uh, sort of faculty uh, hiring and uh, it's, it goes through a number of processes, but basically uh, it evolves in a, in a kind of a bottom-up fashion and uh, that's what we have. We have an excellent uh, team of people, but very diverse, and clearly with very few permanent faculty, which is also a consequence of the last few years of crisis in Spain. So the, 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 the challenge of when we started designing, okay, how can we design a strategic program given this reality? Okay, and that's what uh, we work together, uh, most of the faculty, and uh, for, uh, for quite a few months to prepare uh, this application. And so at the end, uh, well, the idea of this, uh, this type of funding is uh, 2 million uh, euros for four years, so 500,000 uh, euros uh, per year. And if you think of it, uh, I mean, it, it may sound very, uh, a lot of money, but if you count it as what is the percentage of this funding compared with the running uh, budget of the department, it's really very little. So that means that, strictly speaking, you cannot do much. I mean, you can, uh, that, uh, we have to make sure that to use it uh, very, uh, uh, very well and, and with, a, a, a well, uh, with a clear objective. Otherwise, it basically dissolves in the whole budget of the department. And it's a, it's a four-year program. So uh, again, uh, this has limitations. There are certain things that you cannot do. For example, one of the uh, things that clearly you cannot do is you cannot uh, impact on human resources. You cannot impact on faculty hiring. Uh, uh, the, the, the most important uh, uh, sort of uh, activity that the department can, can be uh, part of uh, in order to improve uh, ourselves and, and develop some, some research strategy is in the hiring because of how uh, the, the ones you, you, you hired uh, faculty, sincerely, there is not much you can do on sort of uh, shaping up the, the, the topics or shaping up uh, certain aspects of the research strategy. So that means that with this type of funding, we cannot influence the, the hiring of a faculty. So what can we do? Well, the, the, the idea was, okay, let's uh, uh, work on strengthening uh, the impact of our research. So no, we are not going to start new research. We are not going to find uh, uh, new faculty members and, and starting new initiatives that could be great to do. Uh, let's uh, see what we have and strengthen that, strengthen uh, uh, our potential. 
And of course, uh, uh, another fundamental thing, and, uh, and maybe most of you, uh, the way funding, uh, current funding for research works uh, at the European level, at the ministry level, uh, uh, it makes not that easy the collaboration between us, between the faculty of a department. So basically, most of us don't know what the neighbor is doing, and most of us do not collaborate uh, with uh, other faculty members. So this was a great opportunity to be able to promote uh, synergies within the department, which is something that is uh, hardly happening, and hardly we have the tools to promote that. And finally, of course, it's a very diverse uh, department, as, uh, as uh, I showed, but um, uh, we had to define some clear research goals. And uh, I guess uh, it's not uh, uh, new for uh, all of you that uh, a clear trend nowadays in most uh, research fields, and especially in ICT related, is uh, related with da data processing uh, and uh, uh, big data that is called mainly in. So we, we decided to, to kind of define a, a kind of a, a topic or a set of uh, aspects to promote that uh, we call them data-driven knowledge extraction, which covers uh, a big percentage of um, a lot of what we do. It doesn't cover everything, and of course it doesn't cover uh, everything of, uh, uh, of every group, but it's quite transversal and is a good way to try to bring in into the same uh, place and to establish discussions and to promote initiatives in a, in a sort of very transversal way. So these were uh, kind of the goals that uh, we, we aim. And in fact, uh, the Maria de Maestro has all these uh, initiatives. Uh, they have a, a quite strict evaluation uh, uh, set of criteria that uh, are gonna happen basically when we finish. Well, they're gonna happen in, in at the middle of the project and at the end. And uh, these are, are becoming the standard ways uh, to evaluate uh, research uh, centers and also researchers. Of course, you can criticize uh, those type of evaluations because uh, it's, it's not easy. I mean, it's not easy to do a kind of a quantitative uh, numerical evaluation of research. And uh, many of us are criticizing heavily the way that uh, we are evaluated, but that's what it is. And of course, it's, I think it's getting better and uh, the Maria de Maestro, I think the way it's evaluated is uh, among the standard evaluation procedures that are around. So uh, I believe in them. And so at the end, basically what we decided is, okay, our pragmatic goal of this funding is we have to succeed in renewing the accreditation. If we succeed in renewing the accreditation, it means that we're doing things well. If uh, uh, everything we're going to fund, we're going to support, we're going to promote, if it doesn't help us in achieving this pragmatic goal, well, maybe we're not going to fund it or we're not going to promote it. And for me, that's a very easy way to, uh, to uh, take decisions. And for, uh, but so maybe you could say that uh, it's too easy, but it, I think it works. Uh, we'll see. I mean, we are still uh, six, years into the pro uh, six months into the project, but I think it's a, it's a very clear uh, goal because, in fact, the, the criteria for which we defined the evaluation was uh, made by ourselves. It's, it's, it's kind of a self-evaluation. So we define the criteria with which we want to be evaluated in four years. So then, so it's our own imposed uh, type of criteria. Okay, so what, uh, what are we doing? Uh, I'm not, uh, as I say, uh, I'm not gonna go through everything, but uh, let me just uh, tell you, there is a few transversal actions that uh, we are promoting uh, with, uh, related with what I have been saying. And, um, the, the, the first one, I mean, if we want to work on uh, data-driven uh, processing and research, uh, well, uh, there is no escape but uh, to improve our current computational infrastructure. Uh, so uh, we need to collaborate with the university, with the uh, uh, computer system uh, sort of infrastructure and uh, people uh, supporting uh, the, the, inf in the, the computers and try to make sure that uh, it supports the type of research that we want to do. 
and uh, I have to say just in a few months of the project, it has become evident that that's important. And of course, we, we push for uh, this type of research. And then, of course, we realize that uh, the current infrastructure is not up to uh, what we want. So we need to really work a lot on that. Another very important uh, uh, aspect that uh, we want to work, we are working on, is uh, the idea of uh, reproducibility. And uh, in fact, the uh, keynote uh, tomorrow by Victoria Soden is very much on this. And uh, I think it's a, a very, very important aspect that I would uh, encourage you all to understand. It can be as complex as you want. And I think tomorrow we will realize the complexity of all these. But uh, I mean, since we are starting from really uh, uh, low, I think there is a lot of things we can do uh, to make it better. And I will just mention a few things about that. And uh, there is other actions. I'm going to mention a little bit about this too. Uh, there are other actions uh, that uh, we are doing. Uh, gender equality with a name like Maria de Mestu, there was no escape but uh, to really promote uh, gender equality in ICT. We are really bad. Maybe this audience is not as bad as it could be. There is some women here, but uh, in, uh, in general in ICT, uh, the percentage of women is, uh, is very small. and. Uh, it, uh, we definitely have to take initiatives to promote that. And uh, I think uh, a number of people in the department are, are taking good uh, initiatives for that. And um, also a lot of these uh, nowadays, if you go to any conference in uh, all related fields, uh, deep learning is the uh, topic that everyone is talking about. So we, we have a, a working group uh, working on that. And that's also a good way to um, collaborate between different uh, groups, different researchers working with different type of data, different type of goals, but uh, sharing some methodologies like in deep learning. And there's some more. If you want to look at the website, you will see uh, some of that. So about the computational infrastructure, um, well, uh, as I said, we definitely need to improve our uh, current data hosting and computational infrastructure. Uh, I would say that uh, no one uh, would uh, deny that uh, that's a, an important thing. And of course, uh, the, this discussion, uh, it, it can be uh, quite, uh, quite it, it, it can go into many directions. And, uh, and, and it has gone in many directions in our department, whether we, we just need to go to outside hosting systems and uh, go to Amazon or go to Google for that, or whether to promote our own. But anyway, definitely, we need to improve that. Um, and, uh, it, and we need to make it sustainable. Uh, okay, now we might have the Maria de Maestu, and uh, when some big uh, European project comes, we are able to buy some, some hardware, but uh, that's uh, not always sustainable. Uh, so we have to find a way that uh, we have a, a, a sort of a, a service, an infrastructure that can be uh, supported and uh, economically and also from a from a, a sort of a, a support and service point of view, uh, and that is sustainable, and it can live uh, with the peaks of fundings that we might have in the future, and that researchers are very much aware of what they consume, and that uh, they are aware that that has a cost, and of course this cost may be covered by the department, may be covered with, by Maria de Maestu, may be covered with, uh, with a specific uh, uh, projects, but it has to be covered by uh, some source. And, and we have to make that uh, transparent and uh, make it so that everyone is aware of that. And it's clearly that in the last few months, uh, this uh, ha would have been very much needed because, uh, of course, everyone uh, has started to, to take advantage of what we have and, and uh, store a lot of data and ask for the, for the, uh, for the cluster to um, to compute many things, and uh, it, has, uh, break, uh, it has broken more than uh, what we would have liked to. So anyway, so we definitely have to work on that. And this, of course, it doesn't, it's not just a technical thing. It's a legal thing. It's, uh, it has a, a number of implications at the level of the university that uh, are not easy to solve. And, and uh, the same thing uh, for um, the, this point, the idea is that, OK, uh, a lot of the things that we want to do uh, relate to collaborating with groups, so collaborating with groups outside, even collaborating with companies outside. So we have to find a way 
that from a public institution uh, we can uh, use our infrastructure for these collaborations. And again, that's a, a, a thing that has to be uh, thought and has to be established in a way that uh, it becomes uh, clear and there is uh, uh, no uh, conflicts uh, that can emerge, all kinds of conflicts could uh, result from that. So anyway, so this is, of course, we have started working on that and uh, I think we have done some initial progress, but there is a lot to go before we can uh, really have uh, a computing infrastructure, a service, that supports the department, supports research, and in an open way uh, to, to the outside world. Uh, the, the next topic was uh, reproducibility. And uh, when we started the project, I, uh, well, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, um, uh, Aurelio, we, of course, we started to say, okay, what do we have to do? And the, the first thing you do is, okay, let's, let's look for best practices. And in fact, that's how we got uh, Victoria's uh, name uh, very soon. Uh, and sincerely, we didn't find any. We didn't find any that we would say, okay, this is a best practice in our field for reproducible research that basically we can copy. Uh, many people talk about that, but really there are no, let's say, uh, perfect uh, examples to follow. Maybe uh, tomorrow uh, Victoria will tell us a little bit more of that. But, so we had to, to start, and again, it's not an issue that is just a technical issue, it's not a, an issue that is just uh, related to the uh, researcher. It, it has many implications. So anyway, so we have tried to do that, and of course the, the basic idea in our field is that a publication is not just an article, and this we have to start thinking and making sure that we understand that. Uh, uh, an article is just a very a small part of what a publication is. In our field, a publication is the article plus the data that you use, plus the software that you use. Of course, there are exceptions, and there are a number of uh, researches uh, or types of research that may be very theoretical and, and may not require uh, data and software, but I would say a lot of it is like that. So we have to think that when we publish something, we have to publish this, uh, this unit of article, data, and software. And in the website of, uh, of the Maria de Maestro, we have tried to start when a new publication is, uh, uh, has been basically funded or supported through the Maria de Maestro to encourage that and to make sure that when you have a reference to an article, you also include the link to the software repository, link to the data, and of course, in a way that is adequate. So we have to make sure that the articles are published in, a, in a open repositories, most of uh, the funding agencies in Europe required that all our articles are in open repositories. And uh, in our field, there are not established open repositories, uh, which is in, in other fields is much more uh, uh, common and standard. So the university has uh, its own uh, sort of alternative for as an open repository for articles, but that's still that, uh, which would be the, the simplest one, still not a solved issue. And of course, the data is even worse. Uh, where to put the data and how to make sure that the, the data is uh, accessible, it's of course open. No? Most of the research we do is funded by public funding, therefore uh, it requires that everything we do is open, is, uh, is uh, open source in the case of, or with licenses that uh, allow collaboration with researchers and that's, uh, we are far from solving that. Uh, in, we have tried to solve it uh, within, let's say, the research groups or within the department by uh, supporting uh, re internal repositories, but I think there is a, a lot to do there. And, and finally, for the, the, the software, I would say that that's a fundamental aspect too. In terms of infrastructure, I think most of us uh, use GitHub and that has been the solution for, for storing and maintaining uh, uh, software versions and, and collaborations. But still, one thing is that you actually put it there. The other is that it's written in a way that someone can, uh, can take that article, can take that software, and be able to reproduce their experiments and uh, the, what you have done. And I believe, again, trying to look for a one single example of a paper that accomplishes this in a sat satisfactory way, I have not yet been able to find. 
So if you know of some, please let me know. I think because that would be a good way to sort of uh, uh, use it as an example. And there might be some. I mean, I, hopefully some of ours are, are getting close on that. But of course, if you really go deeply into into that, so there may be uh, definitely problems. Okay, then uh, about the actual uh, kind of research, this data-driven research, I'm not going to uh, talk much about that. Uh, again, our goal was not to, to define specific research uh, projects or research uh, uh, sort of uh, lines, but uh, more a kind of a, a methodological kind of framework for carrying research on data-driven knowledge extraction, and that means to promote uh, data gathering and structuring, so to promote the idea that uh, people can uh, build data sets uh, to help on that, uh, again with the infrastructure, to help uh, uh, development of tools that uh, can be used to analyze this data, uh, and that again we can share, and that uh, is used by more than, than one researchers, and with the idea that if you uh, publish an article with an open data set, with open software tools, for sure that article will have a bigger impact and other researchers will be able to uh, cite your work, will be able to build on top of what you have done. And, uh, and the other, of course, is about uh, data modeling and interpretation, so uh, work on methods to use that type of data uh, to uh, develop uh, knowledge extraction methods and of course every discipline has uh, different ways to do that and uh, you will uh, uh, hear uh, today and tomorrow uh, the different approaches that uh, the different uh, projects ha have done. So how do we, uh, how did we go about supporting specific projects? So Basically, uh, at the very beginning of the Maria de Mesto in January, we, uh, we defined a, a process uh, in which uh, we were able to select a number of projects. And the idea is that uh, these projects uh, uh, had to be carried out by PhDs and postdocs of the department and supervised by uh, faculty of the department, which uh, then are project PIs. No? So we have a number of projects. And uh, what we wanted, and again, we basically wanted to uh, give the responsibility to these project PIs the responsibility that we acquire by getting the, the Maria de Maestro project. So the, what does that mean? So it means that uh, we said in the Maria de Maestro that we would increase the impact of our research. We had to do that. So that means that we want to support projects that are aligned with that. So we, we have to increase uh, the, the number and impact of our publications. And again, with this idea that a publication is not just an article, but is, uh, uh, is the article, data set, and software. Um, we, uh, the, as, as I said, Maria de Mestu, at the end, is not that much money. It would be impossible to be able to support large projects with this. So if we want for this to be successful, we, we, we have to make sure that this funding of Maria de Mestu would be able to multiply and would be able to attract other type of funding uh, that would allow to support uh, these initiatives. So we, we want to make sure that the projects that we support are able to get other support so that uh, they can actually do uh, relevant research. Um, and uh, another important point is these research collaborations, uh, mainly internal, but of course external. So we want to emphasize this collaboration among groups. And you will see in the projects that uh, will be presented that that's very much the case. Uh, I think uh, one of the biggest uh, contributions has been this uh, um, uh, starting of uh, a number of collaborations within uh, the department. And finally, and this is the one that, uh, strictly speaking, we have not started uh, uh, putting so much emphasis, we definitely need to do tech transfer. And everyone talks about that, but uh, uh, there's not that many uh, success uh, examples. We, we are, I mean, I think we are a department that is doing quite well comparing with what is uh, our context. But uh, there is a lot uh, to do, and, uh, and we have to innovate also and think of how to do it from, uh, from our perspective. Okay, and then basically uh, out of that, uh, many faculty people uh, uh, presented projects. And I would say most of them, if not all, were basically supported. So uh, we help, basically we work closely 
with uh, different faculty members and uh, uh, many projects uh, were uh, chosen and supported and these are the ones that will be presented uh, today and tomorrow so no need uh, to explain that. Um, I am um, getting close to the end uh, so an important thing is okay how how do we manage uh, uh, such uh, an initiative? Um, some, if you look at the uh, Maria de Maestu uh, programs and, and mm -hmm. sort of centers, how they have organized themselves, and, and that's a nice, uh, nice thing uh, uh, by the ministry, that they give you quite a bit of freedom of how you organize uh, yourself. And we decided uh, with, the, with the department, with the head of the department, that we wanted to, to not make this uh, Maria de Maestu completely integrated into the department, but uh, be able to have some autonomy uh, so that uh, there are certain decisions that we have to take that if you are head of department, sincerely, you cannot take. Because uh, as head of department, uh, you have to give uh, support to everything, and it's difficult to make uh, decisions that discriminate or that make some uh, some uh, differences among uh, faculty. That's how our current system works. So that's why we, we decided, okay, uh, that's why I am not the head of the department, Mikel is, and I am the scientific director of the, of the Maria de Mesto, which in some other cases you would see that the head of the department is the same than the scientific director. Um, and then uh, a very important uh, aspect that uh, we decided is, uh, is to have and this is something that we always have been, talk, uh, been talking in the department, we need really a manager that does all the work. That uh, uh, normally faculty, we are okay doing research, but uh, we are not okay uh, doing management uh, things, which maybe in other parts of the world is not like this, but in our part of the world is like this. So faculty are not so much willing to uh, uh, take out uh, uh, a lot of management responsibilities. So uh, Aurelio uh, was around, <laughs> he had been around for a while, so he was the perfect person to uh, take on the, the managing of the project. So he's, uh, he's basically fully, he's the only person really fully dedicated to the project and that makes a huge difference because that means that we have someone really taking on the, the, the leadership and the goals of the project in a day-to-day -day, uh, fashion uh, uh, in the department, and that's great. An important aspect of the, of the Maria de Maestu is, idea, this, is this idea of uh, gar guarantors. I don't know how to pronounce this name so well. So the idea is that uh, there has to be an internal, let's say, board of, uh, or let's say, of uh, highly qualified researchers, uh, and uh, there is a, a very strong criteria of who can be uh, such a guarantor uh, in terms of publications, etc. Uh, so there are um, uh, yeah, six plus me, I guess, one, two, three, four, five, six, three uh, guarantors that, uh, whose basic goal is to uh, supervise the progress and make sure that uh, there is a scientific quality on what we do. Okay, that's uh, basically is to and, and, and this is a, a fundamental event for that. Uh, hopefully, uh, many of them are here, and uh, they should be able to assess uh, uh, what we have done, what every group is doing, and therefore, uh, then we can see if that's the direction we want to take, or we have to make some changes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, another important, of course, part of the management are all the project PIs. No? So we have uh, all these uh, uh, projects. Many of these projects are jointly uh, supervised by different PIs. So at the end, there are 22 PIs, and we still have another call coming up. So that means that a big percentage of the department is basically part of the Maria de Maestro. You think that there are 37 faculty, 22 are already within the Maria de Maestro and uh, they are involved uh, in specific projects. And finally, uh, the, the advisory board, uh, that is the board of the department, has a fundamental role here in, uh, in, in telling us uh, how, uh, what are we doing, how bad are we doing, or how good we're doing, so we can take decisions of reorienting that. Currently, we only have uh, this uh, more a scientific advisory board that is the goal within Maria de Mestu to also have some members more on the, on the industrial side. 
so that we can uh, we can see uh, industrial initiatives uh, to uh, to to happen. And so the idea would be that we would increase the advisory board with some industry people so that can help in that. Um, so what are the the of course all what we what I, I mentioned uh, most of it are still of course work in progress. So we just uh, have a year within the the, the four year program, which are, in fact. And as, as Mikel was, uh, was mentioning, uh, I am really very uh, happy to, to have seen so much already in these uh, six months, and I think uh, we're doing quite well. Hopefully it won't decay, so that means that uh, we will do much more in the coming uh, years. But uh, apart from the initiatives that were already are set and that will be taking place and developing, there is some important pending actions that uh, I want to just mention. One is that we'll have a second call for projects. Um, so the idea is after this workshop, uh, we will sit with the guarantors, with the head of the department, and uh, see how uh, it's going and uh, see how much funding we have left, and uh, maybe define uh, another call for uh, some people that may want to, to join in. And, uh, and the, the biggest area that we haven't touched, uh, and the idea in the plan was to phase that in the, in the third year, was more these uh, exploitation initiatives. And um, I guess uh, you are, uh, I was just mentioning this, uh, for me this is one of the biggest uh, shortcomings of, uh, of uh, Spanish universities, uh, uh, even though I would say, again, we are among the few that are doing uh, some good steps towards that, but there is a, we are far from having a, a culture of uh, entrepreneurship that would uh, facilitate people that go through here, undergrads, master's students, PhDs, young faculty people, and, uh, and, and get uh, the sort of the, the entrepreneur type of ideas. And by entrepreneurship, I don't just mean the, the, the typical spin-off, uh, and starting a company. Entrepreneurship for me is a very broad concept, which mainz, mainly means uh, taking control of your career, uh, trying to be, uh, uh, find your own funding in one way or another, and, uh, and taking initiatives to, 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 to be able to support your career by yourself, not hoping to get a contract by a big university or a contract by a big uh, research group, but uh, to be able to uh, to have your own initiative and start something that that can uh, can help create a job for you or for other people, and uh, and that's not that common. Uh, sincerely, most people they are just are uh, the uh, the ideal job after finishing um, an undergrad, a master's, a PhD is uh, okay. Let's apply for uh, for some university position, for some big research center position. And of course, as you all are all aware, the university positions are very scarce or, or, or null. So there are really very few uh, that come by. So there is no way you can uh, develop uh, an academic career with the hope that uh, you're going to be a professor at the university. I mean, that's a very bad for a student and also for the faculty. I mean, it's very bad for us to sort of implant that idea. No, So do a very good PhD. Uh, be uh, the best because you will be able to have a, a, a sort of a faculty position in a, in a good university. That's not that feasible anymore, I would say. So we definitely have to open up the ways that uh, uh, people develop their careers and a fundamental concept is this entrepreneurship. And then this idea that, of course, entrepreneurship and, and spin-off doesn't mean that someone finishes, they have done uh, a great uh, paper on uh, on some technique and say, okay, start a spin-off out of that paper. That doesn't happen that way either. Uh, so we have to really incubate within the university uh, uh, initiatives that can help do that transition and that you cannot just find yourself outside in the street trying to find some venture capital or some support for uh, some initiative that is just a, a paper uh, of uh, your a few equations that uh, show that you have done an amazing piece of work. Um, anyway, so that's still to be done, uh, and I think that's going to create a, a good discussion um, among us uh, to, uh, to, to, to define that. Um, okay, and uh, basically to conclude, um, 
I just want to emphasize uh, some of the things that uh, I mentioned. Uh, clearly, the Maria de Maestro strategic program does not allow to define and develop a human resources strategy. And maybe you could say that that's the most important aspect to even uh, to have a, for, a, for a research policy or for a research strategy. So this clearly has to be done by the department. And even nowadays, the departments don't have that much uh, room uh, for defining that. But that's, uh, I think Maria de Maestro can help in a sort of uh, uh, in some aspect of that. But clearly, uh, we have to, as a department, take on this initiative uh, and make sure that we have a human resources uh, strategy that we can develop despite the context that we are in that uh, doesn't facilitate uh, uh, doing that. But uh, even though we are not able to do that, uh, we are able to do quite a number of, of things and uh, I think uh, very interesting uh, uh, initiatives. And for me, one, a fundamental one is this idea of uh, sharing a culture of quality research within the department. Uh, as I said, uh, our, our department is very diverse. Uh, people come from different disciplines, uh, from different research disciplines, with uh, criteria that are different. And we normally do not collaborate because that's how funding is typically organized. So with Maria de Maestu and through these uh, collaborations, uh, we are really uh, trying to, to this, uh, share uh, some of, of these uh, criteria for evaluation criteria for uh, how to publish, uh, how, to, uh, how to have an impact of our work that is very transversal to everyone. And I think that's uh, helping a lot uh, to the department. Um, even though, of course, I said that we cannot really have a, a research strategy at the level of human resources, we, we definitely can, can, uh, can implement and define some uh, policies, research policies, that uh, can have uh, quite a, a relevant impact. And despite the, the funding not being that large, by being able to focus on a few things very complementary to what uh, the, the department, what the, the, the context we are in, uh, I think we can really uh, improve and develop some, uh, some research uh, initiatives that can have a, a big impact in our department. Of course, that's time will say, and uh, maybe at the end of this workshop we will also learn a little bit more about that, but uh, I am very optimistic about uh, being able to be successful in this type of thing. And, and, and again, related with uh, what we mentioned, maybe the most important one is this idea that uh, research collaborations, despite the fact that we all clearly research cannot, in our fields cannot be done in an isolation, the uh, uh, the context we are in doesn't facilitate that, and with the Maria de Maestro, that's a, a great way to to promote. Well, to promote the idea that the department is a center. In fact, uh, people that may know the history of our department and of many departments, a department, our department was not created with the idea of let's start a center uh, with a goal, with a set of faculty that will develop some clear initiative. Uh, our department came from a number of initiatives and there was a number of initiatives uh, created to support research and that has been changing through the years and now uh, basically we are back to, uh, to the department as the home of research, the home of all of us that have to carry research and so the, the, the idea of considering that the department is a research center, is a research center that has a Maria de Maestu and that we need to collaborate in order to make it better. So, thank you very much. That's all. So maybe there is uh, time for a couple of questions, but uh, while uh, Bart is setting up, then we can... Is there any comment or question? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, can you hear me? Um, yes. Okay, so. Thank you very much for this very clear and motivating introduction. Now I look forward even more to the years to come. Um, and one of the concepts which I liked very much was uh, the concept of the unit of publication. So you said <coughs> that it would consist of the article, but also of the data and of the software. And I would like to propose to even extend this by 
very detailed results. Let me explain uh, what I mean by that, because we start with some gigabyte of data, and then we use our software and this cluster to uh, produce some megabyte of results. And <clears throat> then we condense these results down to some figures and we put them into our papers. But people from, from the outside won't be able to reproduce these results because they don't have our cluster. So I believe that when we publish our, our data, we should also publish um, these very detailed results. So I, I'm not referring to these figures, but to the megabytes of results that we get. And I believe this will even enhance um, the degree to which people then can reproduce um, our findings and compare their findings to what we found from, from that. Mm -hmm. yep. So that, yep. that's an extension to what yeah. you already, sure, 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 um, sure. What you already yeah. uh, proposed. Yeah, very good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Any other uh, comment?